Hey guys, welcome back. This is part four of our how to draw a cat tutorial. And in this part, I just want to focus on highlights, shadows. I'm going to talk about my process and hopefully explain to you the idea behind, you know, creating not just this painting, but how I go about thinking about creating any painting that I work on. So let's get right into it and enjoy. All right, now we are back in Procreate and I decided, for better or worse, I'm just going to try to avoid fast forwarding as much stuff as possible. And I'm even going to try and talk through uh, basically the simple things. So here I opened up the layers tab just to get a quick idea of what I left off on. And it's on layer 11. So if we enable and disable that, you see the cat eye was tweaked. I do also remember that this layer was on top of not only the sketch, but also the fill layer that we did for the cat, which you can see down here, and this is the sketch layer. So I'm going to continue working on layer 11. What you could do is you could always mirror your eye when you only complete one, but for the sake of practice and explaining, I'm going to go ahead and draw the second eye in just as I would normally. So let's open up the brushes tab and make sure that we have a good brush selected. I like the round brush, but I'm going to bump the size up just a bit. And the reason that I'm bumping the size up is uh, I'm going to try and work on this piece, uh, especially uh, for the sake of time. I'm going to try and work on the important parts. And in order to get the painting completed on a good time, uh, try to avoid using really small brushes. Not only that, but most of the detail will be lost when a viewer is looking at it on their phone. Let's say if you posted your drawing on Instagram um, or, you know, just they see it from far away somewhere if you ended up getting a print. All of those details are sure to go unnoticed. So they're more, they're more of a you know, I really dig this painting. I'm gonna just spend as much time as I, I possibly can rendering every little piece of it. But we don't wanna do that here. So what I'm going in and doing is using a slightly lighter color for the, the whites of the eye. But as you can see, I'm not even using a white, a completely white color because our color scheme is a little bit on the cooler side so not only that but the eyeball is also behind some glass and water so it would most likely pick up some of that blue that uh, might be you know floating around in that fish tank so i'm taking some of the local colors to go instead of using an eraser and i'm going in and cleaning up the edges of the, I almost want to call it eyeliner that our cat has, but uh, you see what I'm talking about. So I'm going to color that in just like the other eye. I think first we'll color in all these empty spaces. I'm just going to, I'm actually going to leave some of that texture uh, in there. Normally, I would go through and try to render everything out, but in reality, knowing what to leave behind will probably end up speeding up your you know, time to finish a painting by quite a bit because I, I catch myself kind of cleaning up a sketch and then adding effects afterwards that basically look almost like the sketch version. Uh, kind of like, you know, let's say scribbles uh, for fur. And then I go in and add cleaner scribbles that look like fur. Oh, I, I don't like the, I think it's the four finger touch display. I always accidentally press it. And uh, the UI is always, already so minimalistic that it kind of gets in the way, but that's all right. So what I was saying is, you know, it's going to take a little bit of practice being able to tell a difference between a 
you know, a scribble that you should just keep and move on as opposed to, yeah, I need to redo that. Otherwise the viewer will notice and it's going to kind of cheapen my painting. So I'm going to spend time. Let me use a pretty good color for this. I'm planning on spending a lot of time here because this is a focal point and probably around this area. So what I want to happen is the viewer's eye is first going to catch this part because of the high contrast within the eyes, uh, you know, the black on white and then a little bit of reflection in the pink nose. What I'm hoping for is that their eye goes downwards and start seeing all the fish, the cute little paws. And then, uh, you know, as they move outward, then they'll notice, oh, okay, that's a, that's a fish tank. Cool. So that's the idea. And because of that, I'm not even going to touch up areas like this or, you know, these blurred out, blurred out kind of messes, if you will. Uh, but instead I will add like maybe a, uh, a bubble or two, uh, that's a little bit more in focus to add a little bit of depth. But overall we're keeping the exterior somewhat simplistic. Now I looking from further away, I can tell that the eyes don't match up a hundred percent. And one way to, first of all, you kind of want to avoid perfect symmetry because that not only looks really cartoony, but it just looks weird. Most things in life, at least things that we see on a day-to-day -day basis that aren't man-made, don't have perfect symmetry. Our faces, you know, our pets, faces and all that. So, uh, you know, it's not too big of a deal. You just want to avoid having, you know, completely different shapes. Otherwise, then it looks like uh, you might have like a mutant kitty on your hands. So we're just keeping a general sort of oval. The one on the left here just seems a, a bit more angular. So let's chop, let's chop our right one down. I'm just picking up colors. There was an, an update for Procreate recently that um, makes the Apple Pencil selecting of stuff a little bit easier, which I thought was nice. But I'll probably talk a bit more about, about that in my iPad Pro review. So along the edges of the face here, we're just going to first grab a darker color. We want to get rid of uh, all these, these sketch lines. And I'm not going to worry too much about how fine, you know, the fur looks, even if it's not super pointy, as long as, as long as it kind of varies and flows outwards, I think we will be good. I'm covering up some of the really nice texture here, which makes me a bit sad, but you know, it's okay. We can, let's lower the opacity on the brush somewhat. And then we add some quick hair snippets here and there. This might be a long episode that I'll just split up into two parts and release one and then the other one the next day. Or, um, you know, depending on how quickly I can bang this thing out, I might just do it all in one day. All right, I'm gonna lower the brush size just a bit. So that when we keep going, because I think that one was just a, a little bit too wide. So even, you know, looking at it from far away, I can, I can still sort of feel the unnecessary thickness of it. All right, now going along the ears, we basically want to just fill the space in between the sketch and the fill layer. And we want to make these into one, one image. So you want to blend the, the raw sketches with kind of like the quick color fills. And on top of that, you can go in and highlight and, you know, manipulate the color, the hue, the saturation, all that good stuff. And, uh, you know, that's, that's one way of doing it. You could obviously completely ignore the sketch layer and just, uh, replace it over time by redrawing, you know, the lines on your color fill, but, and that's what I normally do, but for, for the sake of time, and I'm assuming a lot of people that work, 
uh, having patience to work on one drawing for 13, 14 hours is, it's hard. <laughs> you know, you want to move on, you want to try drawing other things. You know, there's only so much time that a person can, uh, can waste on drawing just one cat. You got to draw them all. It's like Pokemon, but real. Okay, so we're going to, again, along the edges, we're going with a slightly darker color because of the lighting situation. So we're still thinking about that. The lamp above the aquarium means that the cat, the cat's face, and any part that's leaning up against the glass is the closest to that lamp. So things like the ears are automatically pushed back and made darker since they're not getting any light. Now, if there was light in the room, maybe a, uh, you know, the lamp, overhead ceiling lamp thing was on, you know, then the cat would have some sort of rim lighting situation going on. But that, and not even that it's too advanced, it's just too complicated and too time consuming, I think, for me to try to get into it right now. I have, so much things I want to get to and I don't get to uh, spend enough time kind of working on my own projects that I want to get these videos out but I also want to draw other things so I'm gonna to try to finish this painting as soon as possible and then I've got some other cool video ideas that I want to share with you guys so maybe um, maybe we'll be able to make this a productive weekend all right so I was just uh, kind of randomly talking about you know things that aren't related necessarily to this drawing but now back to this drawing all I've been doing is going off the same idea that you know the background stuff is darker than the foreground stuff so for those of you that are completely new to art the foreground just means things that are technically closest to you so the cat in this case is on the midground. The glass or anything behind the cat is the background. And then the fish, the ground of the aquarium and the anchor are all foreground because they're closest to us. It doesn't have anything to do with being higher or lower. It's just a way to think about depth. So when you hear me talking about foreground, background, midground, uh, you can kind of imagine that's how it is. And this is, you know, simple stuff that they teach you in middle school, probably even elementary school. But, you know, there's people who maybe don't take art classes or are doing this way later in life where uh, schooling, the only thing you kind of remember is your PE teacher being, a, you know, an old hag or something like that. That's, that's what we had. We had this one PE teacher. She was, let's just say she made it really apparent that she hated her job. And, um, yeah, I don't know why you don't just quit at that point. But anyways, back to the subject. And that is ears and, you know, more fur drawing. I'm not going to spend a lot of time. I have to keep telling myself that because if you guys know me, I could spend a really long time on a drawing and going in and detailing so much so much little stuff that by the time that you know I, I finish the drawing I get sick of the the thing and looking at it or uh, or I don't even finish it kind of like with that wasp that I was drawing in an earlier series which I imported into the uh, iPad Pro and I will be finishing that up hopefully sometime this month or next. I don't know. It's actually really easy to import Procreate files. So I'm going to do this, this sort of wavy pattern for the fur. And one way that I like to think about fur and drawing it is you try and imagine the real thing, you know, when you're weaving a basket in real life, what sort of motions, what sort of things are being done, you know, and you can try to recreate that 
on on pen and paper or on paper with pen or pencil and you'll get a similar result if you it, this really applies to things that you've never drawn before in my opinion and that's how I went about drawing things like water splashes you know with giant fish trying to hunt for stuff that I just thought about what it's supposed to look like and then I winged it and yeah it may not be a hundred percent right but at the same time because I perceived it as you know this is how I remember it and this is how I see it almost anyone else that saw my painting was like oh you know that's totally a giant water splash instead of saying something like why is that like crazy ice monster you know attacking this duck for example so that's something to consider I don't know how helpful it is maybe just for completely new beginners but at the same time I don't want to push people in the wrong direction and uh, end up wasting their time doing something wrong instead of kind of doing it right the first way, uh, the first time. And of course, I'm talking about advice like learn how to paint light, right? It's really, that's pretty much all it really comes down to. Once you've mastered lighting, you are done. That's it. There's nothing else. I'm just kidding. There is more you could learn, but lighting just applies to everything you can draw and shade and make things things look awesome uh you know just on the spot like dynamic you don't have to think about it you just already drew the light and the way it interacts with objects so much that you just you're good at it and that's it but uh that's more of like a lifelong pursuit i think for many artists including myself all right, so here we are going to just touch up the nose a bit. I think I'm just gonna keep the sides dark. I like the contrast that it gives. We're gonna bump up the brightness of this color. Yes, I am aware that, you know, we're looking through a glass thing, but that's okay. Now we have our little fishies let's get the reflection onto the other eye and then uh, oops and then we'll grab some of the same color I think the fact that we don't have the same exact eye and even the reflection differs a little bit it it really helps kinda of ground the character or the scene uh, maybe not so much for this painting but I feel for many others where I've done you know similar things just flipping and rotating an eye I often find myself wanting to and needing to change you know something like let's say the brow height a little bit or uh, like I said the reflection the shading within the eye because keeping it too symmetric tends to look all I don't know goofy of course if you have you know a simple dot for your eye, which nothing wrong with that, then uh, you know, be my guest, keep it as is. All right, let's also grab this slightly darker blue and place it around the insides of the nose to help push the little white area in towards the nose. So it's kind of like it has a dark, uh, a slightly a slight crack around around the nose area an indent if that makes sense especially like hopefully you can tell right here is where I'm trying to make that really apparent and then using that dark color on the mouth area let's go in with a more saturated saturated blue Okay, Every, all of that is on its own layer. Um, I should have probably split it up from the beginning of the video, but you can see, you know, a little bit of fur, it's making progress. We're gonna finish up this side of the fur, and then I'm gonna quickly go and only hit the edges of the lower body on the cat, just to make the paws. I accidentally keep drawing with my finger, but 
not a big deal. I just double tap the screen or tap once with two fingers to undo. It's uh, really quick. I don't have to pan my fing my hand, my pen all the way to the left of the UI and instead I can just do it on the spot. So it's tap with two fingers to undo and tap with three to redo. Huge, huge help. So let's say, whoops, I accidentally undid and then I just tap with three fingers, bam, it's back. And another thing, I don't know if I've talked much about this, but Procreate has a ton of undo levels. It's pretty amazing. I always, I always have that moment not always, but I've had that moment where in Photoshop, I just make a dumb mistake and I'm like, oh man, I already know that I done goofed and trying to get back, I won't be able to. Uh, there's some scribbles over there that I'm not gonna worry about cleaning up. But I uh, try to undo and you know it only allows, let's say, to undo 30 times. But because my strokes were so small and specific that that's not enough and I'm like okay well now I have to spend extra time getting it back to what I wanted it to look like but not not the case with Procreate you can pretty much from the time you open the app uh, you can undo to that point after drawing so I can't go all the way back to the sketch layer here because I closed the app after that but I could technically undo to the point where we began this video. So that's pretty helpful. All right, going in and using, I, I'm not pressing very hard by the way. I, I wonder if there, well actually I guess there's not really much need but all I'm doing is you can see the opacity is not at 100% which further helps me not having to press uh, too lightly but I'm just going in with a very medium-esque uh, pressure and uh, I'm putting down some light strokes in the direction that I imagine the fur would be growing. That's all I'm doing. And color-wise, every once in a while if I'm transitioning to an area that has a lot of lighter color as opposed to what I was just drawing over I will just color pick a general spot on that area like let's say here and then I can now continue to draw fur around that location but if I take that really light color and start adding it here I'm like oh that's way too light so that's something you have to keep in mind all right I I'm almost happy with the head I just want to clean up the edges here. I'll even grab this really dark color because you know we can and I'll sparingly drop it in between a few of these strokes to help give the illusion of depth. You know you have some some hairs that uh, that are behind others and those that are really far back aren't getting a lot of color so they're gonna be darker. Okay cool we've got our cat. Now one more thing that I want to fix, actually two more things. I want to fix this eye. What's bugging me is the eyeliner here isn't isn't smooth. Now the reason that I'm taking time to do this is because I already mentioned that this is preferably the first point of interest that I want the viewers eyes to go to and my way of accomplishing that hopefully is through contrast and that's generally how you know whenever I watch a video of somebody who talks about their composition that's generally how they do things it might be okay to add a little bit of blue you can add all sorts of colors but no I don't like how that looks it makes it almost feel like there's some sort of sky in the background or something I'll add this slight light gray towards the bottom. Just vary up the iris color so that we don't keep it plain black and it just looks dead. I think that's probably the biggest reason is flat colors will make it look dead. Uh, another thing I just noticed is this part is way darker than the right side. So let's 
fix that. And all that's gonna take is, as you can see, I don't have to zoom in, I don't have to be crazy precise, is just using this darker color that I just picked up on the other side, not worrying too much about switching colors. And I'm gonna go ahead and keep layering that until I feel like the sides look symmetrical. Or maybe not symmetrical, because if let's say your cat was facing a different direction, I'm gonna undo that last stroke, it was a little bit too wild. Uh, yeah, if your cat was you know, looking this way, I'm gonna add a 3D arrow, because we're fancy like that. So if he's looking, you know, not exactly to the side, then, uh, you know, maybe one side, yeah, will be darker, and then the other side, you have to think about it. You will make it darker, but not too dark. So that's sort of what I'm trying to figure out here, is all our light source is above, so I don't have to worry about that too much. Whoops, dragging my finger across, trying to color pick. Every once in a while, you guys will see me make random sketches, like sketchy lines like that. Don't worry about it, that's just me trying to select color. So we have our kitty on a separate layer. Honestly, I want to already collapse this down to the drawing layer. Look, if we get rid of the line art, it already holds its own really well, honestly. I am, instead of getting rid of the line art though, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get rid of parts of it. So I feel like we've got this part on lock. So having that selected, I don't have to click the plus or minus, whatever is in this selection, tap here and hit clear. So that's erased. Everything that was outside of that selection, like the paw drawings are still there. So yay, technology. Okay, now we have whiskers that we need to do. I'm gonna create a new layer for these whiskers and I'm gonna switch to a pencil brush. So I'm using the HB pencil, it's modified. I'm pretty sure the only thing I modified was under the pencil tab, I turned off tilt and opacity. I may have already mentioned this, but for those that don't know or haven't seen or don't remember, here's me mentioning it again. Let's keep it at 15% and using this darker color, let's try to do a couple of on strokes. I'm going to go larger. I actually want to go lighter than uh, that black. So we can see I went with this dark color, but instead I'm going to pan over here and there's a slightly lighter gray slash green color. And you know, do whatever, whatever you want for the whiskers. You can keep them all straight. You can curl them up. Maybe I'll do like a small curled one. Try to keep it one solid stroke. If you have beat up whiskers, then you know you can change directions at certain points. You might have some short baby ones. And then let's do the other side. So especially whiskers, I would not recommend uh, just mirroring because that's how that's how you make your drawing look really cheap. It's like, hmm, those hairs are exactly identical to these other hairs. So something to consider. Besides, you get to draw more whiskers. Like they're not they're not difficult. It's fun, kind of. They're not difficult, but they're also not too uh, compelling, I guess. I'm not like, oh yes, I get to draw more whiskers. It's more of like, okay, let's add some little final, final touches to this thing. And I kind of want to put one whisker in the back right there. What I'm trying to do is not draw over this one too much so that it seems like it's forward. 
And one other thing that I will add is I'm going to try it. Might, I might not like it. I experiment often when I'm working. I'm going to zoom in and get a good angle. And I want to add a slight white rim. Let's go back down to that 15 or so size. On top of this whisker, at least on top of some of the big ones. And the reason I'm doing this is, again, if you re recall our lighting situation, it's above the aquarium. And the whiskers right now don't stand out at all. They don't look like anything besides the ones that cross over in front of the face you can you can definitely show more depth within your drawing by having areas of conflicting contrast i guess so sorry about the whole panning this is just how i'm used to working because I'm very particular about you know my stroke movements so I like to pan the screen so that it matches it that's why I don't really I'm not a huge fan of uh, other painting apps that don't have such easy accessibility to drawing or to panning the screen I'm gonna erase right there because we have that whisker that that curves I'm gonna hit this area with slightly more white Mm, I'm gonna undo that that's a little too much white let's redo that and I'm zooming in closer because precision here is more important for me again I'm spending more time on the area that's going to be focused for the viewers eyes that I want focus on okay and let's go through and Add some white right there. Let's do white right there. Boom. Okay, now the whiskers. Cool. But just before we move on, I also want to grab a slightly darker blue than the little uh, face whisker area. Grab a slightly larger pencil brush and very lightly indicate where shadows might be coming down don't worry this will not look like the whiskers are crying if uh, you know if you do them it, they're pr it's pretty hard to mess up like let's let's be real here this is not nothing amazing but it's little touches like this that might give your painting a little something extra so you can see Right? It doesn't look like they're crying. I put them on the same layer so I can't even show you guys. Yeah, if you turn that off then it looks like something's melting. So I also noticed on the whisker layer I accidentally have a small pencil um, mark right there. I hope that's gone. Okay, cool. So the whiskers are complete. We can... I'm not going to collapse them just yet in case I need to touch stuff up or if I want to go back later and render this drawing out, which I'm almost certain I will not due to time sensitive projects and work and all that that I'm working on. So, but for you guys, I'm trying to give as good advice as possible. And that would be, if you feel like you're gonna go back and uh, do work on it, maybe don't collapse it because it's gonna be really hard to shade around him and not you know accidentally cover up the the whiskers or the shadows or anything like that okay cool let's move on to the paws i feel like we're going to at least finish the cat today because you know why not that's that's cool that's what that's what we're here for so i'm going to create a new layer even though i'm later going to collapse that with this one with the cat drawing detail layer and the reason I'm creating a new one is just for, uh, you know, comfort, like just so I'm, I feel safe. It, it helps me feel secure. I'm like, man, I can't mess up. If I do mess up, I can always undo. And I like that feeling. So that's what I'm going to do. 
I'm trying to move around and sit more comfortably. I, I feel like we've already been going a while, but it's okay. The fun don't stop, so we're going to keep hammering this thing out. I'm going to grab a slightly darker, more saturated pink. Again, remember, generally when colors get darker, they are more saturated. Well, I guess if it's a color thing, but if you're talking about like a matte, desaturated car, I'm sure even in darker areas, it'll still be slightly more saturated than than the light parts. But yeah, in those extreme examples, maybe it won't be that saturated. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this darker color to mainly go over the areas that have the pencil lines so that later on when I do add highlights to those purple balls it will be so uh, I will see you know what I'm covering up and it won't it won't affect it won't it won't be affected Ugh, my bad it won't be affected by the pencil lines that were once there I still feel like I'm really learning the whole talking while drawing thing. I don't get enough practice doing this, but you know, hopefully I this uh, will improve with time and I get rid of my ums and my uh. But only time will tell. And I actually just wanted to say, you know, thank you guys for all the nice comments. I'm surprised, you know, I don't get as much haters as I thought I would. I feel like my content a lot of times it's really rushed and I don't I don't put as much time into editing and making fancy transmit transitions and all that as I should have. Maybe even things like double checking, making sure the sound is good. So, thank you guys for first of all subscribing and watching. Um, that's a huge kind of motivational boost for me to keep pumping these videos out and by pumping I mean once a month which is let's be honest if you pump water at that rate your village will will uh, die but again you know thanks for everybody who views these things and shares them and and comments you guys are awesome I hope that I get better and I can release more so that you know I'm able to share what I know and what I've learned over my years of drawing and and things that I'm learning that might help other people too uh, because I feel like that was what I was looking for you know my channel is sort of what I was looking for when I was starting out little things like you know what is the process of drawing I remember watching uh, this guy on on YouTube and he's drawing this like really cool black and white drawing and then bam three seconds later it's got like full color and I was like whoa hold on you know what just happened how did he do that what is going on and nobody had an explanation for it nobody even mentioned it in the comments and uh, at the time I wasn't aware that you know you just drop a color layer and bam you do that so anyways the hands if you were watching and paying attention all I was doing was trying to transition and smooth kind of the color shift from something really rough to a little bit more softer looking but still going from that general dark underside of the paws here I'm gonna hopefully get a roughly similar shape for the paws which is just a circle things like paws you could uh, you could mirror. It's not so scary not to, um, or it's not so scary to do. So what I want to do is, these are the new paws. As you can see, I can pretty much get rid of the pencil line altogether, and you would still be able to tell what this drawing is. But I feel like this lower area is a weak point, and I'm not going to. As I mentioned before, I'm going to try to refrain from adding too much detail. All I want to do is use a darker color 
to help push that form just a bit. And by just a bit, I do mean just a little bit. So we're using the darker color on all the muscle folds, I guess, the areas where the legs would fold. So then when I remove this, I can, with that drawing still kind of fresh in my mind, I can try to figure out where the darker areas might be. They might be here, might be there. And this part does not need to be perfect because it is, you know, you can go ahead and try to make it perfect. I'm not really willing to spend that much time on some, some paws. And get the underside here just a bit. All right, and the tail. The tail will go darker at first to separate it from the leg. And then as it kind of does its own thing, it'll, let's, let's uh, pick up some of this color right here near the aquarium on the bottom. Maybe it's, you know, the table reflecting and the light that's reflecting from the lamp is bouncing off the table and hitting the underside of the tail. So little weird things like that are, you know, stuff that you can consider trying to add to your drawing as well as, you know, maybe the foot down here is being lit up from that table as well. It's a glowing table, guys. And also we can add some of that lighter color right here too. So that just helps define the form without, you know, without sort of breaking it. And see, we can really, really see the legs now as opposed to before. Hopefully that's not too much too fast. Um, but yeah, basically it's just bounce light and uh, playing around with it. So if you guys have no idea how to do that, I suggest start sticking it into your drawings, even not necessarily in parts that should have it, you know, just, hmm, if there was a light source here, you know, and just add that in and see how that works. You might be surprised. That's sort of how I started doing it. Heck, I still kind of do it that way. And then uh, when somebody asks, well, why is that lit? I'm like, oh, well, you see the way this drawing is set up. Some guy in the corner was holding a flashlight. Wouldn't you know it? He's like, but this is a drawing of a night. They didn't have flashlights back then. And then I just get mad and then, you know, awkwardly walk away. But no, seriously, I, I feel like one of the things that I try to do with my drawings is I experiment with perspective. So something like this, I'm pretty sure I've never drawn before. Uh, not only that, but I also try to every once in a while, not all the time, not every single drawing is a completely new thing for me. A lot of stuff is familiar, but I try and do things like, you know, a fire related painting, for example, to just practice painting fire or some like really water heavy scene. Just things like that. So I'm looking around for areas where I just want to make slight touch ups. Okay. So I'm going along the tail, blah, blah, blah. All right, we're gonna keep that tail the way it is. The paws, however, I feel still need to be, they need a little bit of direction. They need a little bit of help. They need a little bit of love. And what I did realize is we're missing that lighter pink color. So what I'm gonna do for this pink color is I'm grabbing a less saturated, not too white and Specifically, I'm doing a very uniform color to show the paw being pressed up against glass. I don't know if you guys have ever seen, you know, a kid as you're driving by, they're sticking their ugly little mug up against the window and like 
sticking out their tongue or making an ugly face. We're just, we're doing the same thing. I'm gonna use a couple strokes of that color instead of going in, going over it once because being able to put down the same stroke multiple times allows me to create soft edges instead of relying on you know one line where I don't pick the brush up. So that's what I just did there. As you see me, maybe you can even hear it. I'm picking it up and you can hear a slight tap. All right. And guess what? All of that we were doing without the sketch layer. Yay us. But I will be getting rid of the sketch layer right now actually because I no longer feel like I need it. And I will drop these paws onto their own layer. So that's the before and this is the after. We're making some progress. Okay guys, I'm gonna move on to part five where we just add maybe nails to the paws and then fix the fish, the foreground, all the foreground objects and touch up the mug just a little bit and then bam, we're done. So thanks again for watching. This has been fun and we're not done yet because part five is coming soon. So I'll see you guys then. Bye bye.